Welcome to the season finale of Sensodyne Repair and Protect Presents Body and Mind Season 8, powered by Vaseline. Now, as we bid adieu to 2023 and welcome 2024 with open arms, I'm sure you can agree with me when I say that there's a lot to reflect and ponder over, but most of all, there's a lot to be grateful for. It's, it's time to say thank you. So today at Ikamai, I'm going to do all that and more. So I've got my linen top on and before I assume my yoga position, I need to say namaste to two very special people who make this experience absolutely unique. I'm going to start with the founder of Ikamai. Vasili, can you tell me a little bit about, of course, the concept, but firstly, the meaning behind Ikamai. So Ikamai uh, can be literally translated from Sanskrit language as one mother. Uh, so you can say it only uh, also as uh, one source. So every religion goes to uh, one source. Every all of the creation comes comes from one source. So Ekamai is uh, one source. Okay, and I understand that you've uh, traveled extensively and you bring a lot of your knowledge and experience into this holistic yoga center. So can you tell us a little bit about what all we can expect here? So together with my wife, uh, Katya, we created this uh, space, um, which is the first Kundalini Yoga studio in the UAE. And uh, here we do all kinds of different holistic practices like um, sound healing. Of course, Kundalini Yoga is uh, the main part and um, art therapy classes and everything actually that is connected to creativity, creative mm -hmm. energy, because Kundalini is the creative energy, which uh, through this practice we awaken. Now, I don't know a whole lot about Kundalini and that's exactly why you are here, Mariam. You're one of the instructors here at Ikamai. Can you start off by telling us the difference between Kundalini Yoga and just regular yoga? So Kundalini Yoga is an ancient practice that was made accessible for householders. It combines breath, pranayama, asana, movement, meditation, and of course, mantra, making it a practice that allows us to connect really with the divine within ourselves. Mm -hmm. So whereas a typical yoga class could involve asana practice and sometimes some breath, something that could move the physical for sure, the emotions maybe, and the mind, who knows. Mm -hmm. um, Kundalini Yoga has this special recipe because it's a Kriya Yoga technology that activates all those pillars. Okay. Now, different people practice yoga for different reasons. Predominantly, a lot of people do it for weight loss, to be more flexible, for a little bit of strength training, to improve concentration. Why do people come here and attend your classes? What are they expecting? Well, the class that I hope to deliver is a spiritual experience for people to finally be able to drop their minds and go within their heart and really connect to that which is within. And so, um, yeah, Kundalini Yoga, it does those things as well. No two classes are the same. You can lose weight, you can relax the mind, you can do all sorts of things. If you take all the energetic and spiritual benefits out of Kundalini Yoga, you're still left with one of the most effective aerobic system out there. Mm -hmm. Now, since we're just one day away from welcoming 2024, gosh, how does time fly? I understand that the program that you've designed for me today is uh, very reflective of that, the conscious uh, New Year celebration. It took me ages to remember this name. <laughs> I don't know why. Can you tell us a little bit more about this program? Sure. So we believe that the way that you end your year and the way that you start your year are two very important things. Yeah. Um, so we're basically curating an event where we allow people to experience Kundalini Yoga, to go into deep states of meditation, to have chanting, to clear all the energy and the karma of the year that has been accumulated so that we can start afresh. So we'll have gratitude rituals and ceremony and um, some sound and all sorts of different beautiful things that are prepared um, so that people can really embark into 2024 with a new fresh clean slate and a lot of inspiration. You know, I'm ready to clean my slate for sure. 2023 <laughs> has been heavy, so I'm ready to clean my slate for 2024. Let's get started. Great. Thank you.
We've just finished our Kundalini Yoga session. I want to understand a little bit more about what we just did. What is the outcome we're expecting from this form of yoga? Yeah, so the practice that we did today is what's known as a more tantric practice. So rather than it be more asana based, we were doing something called Sabag Kriya. This is a Kriya that is known to take us off the path of what is fated for us. All of the karmic lessons, all of the learnings that we're meant to have in that difficult way, onto our highest destiny. Mm -hmm. So it rewires somebody from their fate to their highest destiny. I understood you definitely need a lot of upper body strength because there was a lot of arm movement. I couldn't quite keep up with you, but there's there's a lot of arm movement and limited feet movement. So every Kriya is different. Yeah. There are over 8,000 practices in the Kundalini Yoga system mm -hmm. and it can be absolutely tailored to whatever someone needs. It's adaptogenic as well. Um, in this Kriya, it's not a, really that kind of strength, but it's more of an endurance mentality. Yeah. So it's, it's the this place that you reach in your mind where you know you can just keep going in life no matter what. So it's a really great way to train the mind for everyday habits and encounters that you know you can keep going no matter what. Uh, the beginning of the segment we mentioned that we're just a day away from the new year. New year, new dreams, new aspirations, new challenges. We're going into the new year with a lot of uncertainty with everything that's going on in the world right now. So this particular Kriya is it something that's going to help us uh, relieve some of our past baggage? Absolutely. So in Kundalini Yoga, we're always working the energy body. In Kundalini Yoga, we also work Shakti and Bhakti. So Shakti is the principle of strength and the life force energy, the breath, the movement, the asana. And Bhakti, any practice, any yoga is void without devotion. Mm. So in this Kriya, we're doing both. We're clearing the slate, we're doing a lot to cut cords and release old patterns, but we're also chanting mantras that bring in that divine remembrance. Okay. So it's really setting us in a good way to start afresh next year. Uh, this has been very refreshing, but I understand it's only the start of my experience here at Ikamai. I'm very excited to see some of the other rituals that we will be performing a little bit later today. So please, Thank you. I hope you still have me. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> so much more coming your way, so make sure you come right back after this break. Welcome back to Sensodyne Repair and Protect presents Body and Mind Season 8 powered by Vaseline. Now after that very unique yoga session, it's time to move on to some other rituals over here and we formed a circle over here. It's very cozy, very zen over here, beautiful crystals and a whole bunch of decoratives. Uh, now I want to ask you a little bit about the next ritual that we're moving on to. I understand it's about um, showing gratitude and positive affirmations. Absolutely. So the next practice we're going to engage in is a gratitude meditation in action, where we will put down a list of our gratitudes, everything we want to be thankful for this year. And as the water holds a lot of memory and um, is found in all of life, it you know constitutes a good part of our beings, we're going to offer these uh, gratitudes into the water. Um, so just inviting everyone to just gently close your eyes for a moment. And to see yourself as a body of water, to feel all the water in your body, energetic, emotional, physical. And coming into your heart space, just in your own language or in your own way, connect to the words, thank you. And open your heart and when we open our eyes, we're going to reach for our pens and make a list of the beautiful things we are thankful for in our lives. So let's go ahead and do that. Giving thank gratitude to the water, to the elements.
So we've just finished offering our gratitude to the universe. Now moving on to the next ritual, Vasili. So what's it going to be? I believe it's called the floral creation. Floral wands creation. Yes, exactly. That's the one. So yes, what we're going to do, we're going to take crystals, which each one of them has a special, um, it holds different energies. It uh, works on different aspects of ourselves. Uh, for example, one can bring us strength. One, uh, the other can work on our creativity or anything. And uh, we're going to attach it to different herbs. Each one of them also has different colors, uh, different benefits, and uh, we're going to express our creativity by uh, doing this, uh, but by uh, selecting different herbs and uh, different crystals. Okay, so let's get on with it, Vasily. Where do we start from? Yeah, so um, each of you, just uh, please come to the center and pick your favorite um, pieces. So we're gonna do it as, um, as a group, all together, and uh, each one of us will add something to it, so it will be like a group creation. So we've just finished our floral wand creation and we're moving on to our next ritual which is oracle card which is going to give us a little bit of an idea of what to expect from 2024 or how to approach it rather. So these are the cards and uh, I believe we're all going to pick one, yeah. shall we? Okay, let's go for it. Mine says vulnerability. Okay, <laughs> mine is gift. Oh, I wish I won this one. <laughs> you take it. <laughs> but jokes aside, can you tell us what vulnerability really means? Am I supposed to be more vulnerable approaching 2024? Uh, so the meaning of vulnerability card, uh, have the courage to be vulnerable and show the real you. Uh, paradoxical as it may sound, there is real strength in vulnerability. Now it's time for the final leg of my experience here at Ikamai and to take us through that we have Annalie over here and I believe this is a dance therapy. Why are we ending it with dance? So the dance therapy is the beautiful way to open your energy, to feel in your energy through the dance. And we start from the uh, water energy, uh, just uh, make connection with ears and let your arm go like a wave. Feel the wave in your hands. You can close your eyes. Relax your shoulder. So how was your day? Honestly, I feel like my day is just getting started because you've served me all this delicious food <laughs> at your vegan cafe here called Eco Minds. Very fresh uh, fruits and vegetables and I can see that for the large part it is plant-based. Uh, my favorite part is going to be hard because I experienced so many different things today. A lot of unique um, uh, sessions which I've never seen before from the Kundalini Yoga to the gratitude offering, the floral arrangement to the little dance therapy at the end. All in all, it was um, a very different experience, one I'll remember for sure. 
Thank you so much for having me here today and for your wonderful hospitality and company. I certainly have learned a lot today at Ekamai, right from giving and receiving positive vibes to the balance between harmony and positive vibrations. Thank you so much for joining me. There's lots more on the other side, so make sure you come right back. Welcome back to Sensor and Repair and Protect Presents Body and Mind Season 8 powered by Vaseline. Now it is New Year's Eve. I'm looking out to the sky waiting for the fireworks to begin. But before the party starts, a girl's got to eat. So I couldn't pass up a dinner invite by Chef Simi right here in downtown, the heart of Dubai. First of all, a very, very happy New Year in advance to you. And to you too. Thank you so much. Now, Chef Simi, I can never say no to a food invite, particularly when it's home cooked. And of course, from somebody who has so much experience and passion about food. So thank you so much for that. So I'm gonna ask you a little bit more about your background because I understand that you're a self-taught home cook, uh, but you've traveled around the world, had pop-ups in so many different places. So how did your love for food come about? Well, my love for food is, you know, inherently in me. I'm, I'm just a foodie. I love cooking, I love eating, and I love feeding people. Okay. Um, so, you know, my travels around the world, like people travel and figure out what to do. I travel and I figure out what to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's pretty much, um, you know, how I, uh, my emotion with food is, and and the pop ups that I do around the world um, has, you know, helped me in honing my skills. Obviously, when you cook, you learn. Um, when you do, you learn. So, you know, over the years, I've taught myself and I've learned. Okay. I understand that you specialize predominantly in Indian cuisine, but you have done a little bit of Levant and things. Um, you are a diabetic yourself, and I understand that your cooking reflects that it is quite... Um, I guess, diabetic friendly, would you say? Yes, it is. And, um, you know, over the years, I've switched, um, you know, changed the way I manage my carbs. And, you know, being uh, a South Indian, my my food is quite, uh, my cuisine is quite carb centric. Mm. So whether it's rice uh, in several different forms, I've uh, I've made a switch uh, to, to a healthy grain um, millet. And so uh, a lot of my food is about portion control and managing it with exercise exercise and, and diet and exercise together. Definitely takes a lot of discipline. One, uh, something that I absolutely lack. Can you tell me about, a little bit about this dish that I'm tasting? So what you're having there is a makana salad um, and it's pretty simple. It's just got the regular salad ingredients, but makana is uh, fox nuts and um, it's a good source of protein. Uh, so for, you know, if you're a vegetarian, for example, uh, it's a good way to add it to your diet. It also adds a crunch element. Texturally, it works in a salad. What's uh, the spices? Because the seasoning is just amazing. So I've just, I mean, literally I've got the tomatoes in there for the sour element and then we've got some bird's eye green chilies. So there's no like real seasoning, it's no, all no, veggies. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, one of the makana that we've used is actually a flavoured um, one so you know that adds a little bit of seasoning also. I think I love the way you've been so clever with um, you know the ingredients because there's of course the crunch from the peanuts, the fox nuts, uh, the cucumbers, the flavors from the pomegranate, tomatoes, onions, really really nice. It doesn't need anything else. I thought this chaat masala, I was tasting masala in it but you know you've just used all natural real ingredients yeah. which is quite impressive. Now, being a fellow South Indian, I'm sure you had to represent a little bit. Of course, right? of course. Is that what I have on the table over <laughs> yes, here? Yes, the, the chicken curry is definitely a South Indian representation. So it's made with coconut oil and coconut milk, of course. Um, it's not spice heavy. Uh, as you know, with South Indian food, it's pretty much fresh spices. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of whole spices like peppercorns and uh, cardamom and, and things like that and, and fresh green chilies and fresh ginger um, so I hope that all of that flavor comes out um, is this a chicken stew kind of mm. but not really yeah okay yeah. can you tell me a little bit about this dish um, so this dish is very simple it 
can be prepared earlier. You just marinate the chicken in spices and then you just cook it in coconut milk. So it can literally come together in half an hour before your guests arrive while you've done the prep. So it's not one of those dishes where you have to keep stirring the onion, the ginger, the garlic as you normally do with Indian food. So I've kept it simple so that it's easy and you have time to get ready and come out and be the hostess that you want. You know, it just reminds me of home. This uh, tastes and smells like something my mother or my grandmother would cook. That flavor of coconut milk, it just gets you. And, and just, the coconut oil. Exactly, yeah, yes. Yeah. It just reminds me of home. Now, I want to know a little bit because you've traveled and you've had your pop-ups in, in Europe, in Belgrade, for example. You set up your own business over there. How was Indian food perceived over there? So Indian food um, didn't have the recognition over there because you, traditionally the Serbs are meat and potatoes yeah. uh, kind of people. But there was a lot of foreigners there who um, you know, missed Indian food. So people were really amazed at the variety of Indian food uh, every month for my pop-ups that I was doing. And they were like, oh, this isn't butter chicken or <laughs> this isn't naan. And you know, I, I introduced them to appams and I introduced them to appam and stew. And you know, so they were like, wow, we don't even know about this what is this and I would say fermented rice bread wow <laughs> and so that would be the fancy way of yeah, saying fancy it. fancy make it oh. fancy but uh, they haven't uh, you know they they hadn't eaten those things so it was interesting to introduce something that people hadn't heard of mm -hmm. so um, on that note of introducing uh, cuisines and things I'd like to introduce you to a millet pulao that I've done I was gonna ask you what this is initially I was like is this quinoa is it upma I couldn't quite tell yeah, but it's no. millet okay. yeah it's barnyard millets which is closest to rice and so millets is actually quite a sustainable grain uh, it's better for diabetics than rice or wheat. And, and is the cooking process of millet similar to rice? For maximum health benefits, it's best to wash and soak it, uh, preferably overnight. But if you don't have time, at least a few hours, so that it's um, you know it digests better. Um, and you know, it, again, it, this isn't something that's stripped completely and polished. Yeah. So your gut will take a little bit of time to, to mm. process it. So while you've been busy uh, educating me on the goodness of millet, I've been going to town on this pickle. It is so delicious. I'm glad you're enjoying the spicy pickle, but I hope that you don't suffer from sensitive teeth. Not anymore. Oh, okay. When we make it back home, um, it's way spicier, but I've toned oh, really? it down a little bit for you. All I do is ensure that my family and I brush twice a day with Sensodyne Repair and Protect Toothpaste. We love enjoying our food, be it hot, cold, spicy, as the problem's not going to go away, is it? So Sensodyne Repair and Protect gives you protection from sensitivity. We also make sure that sensitivity is never something to worry about. It's important to focus on tooth sensitivity, right? Because let's face it, a lot of us are guilty of just ignoring it. We assume that it is a problem that's just going to take care of itself, but it really doesn't. To get rid of pain, I always say people should replace their generic toothpaste with Sensodyne to Repair and Protect. And this is honestly the perfect amount of spice for me. Let's move on to the dessert. Is this a dessert that you popularly prepare for your friends and family? Yes, it is. Um, and also as someone um, with diabetes, yeah. I think this is a little bit of an indulgence. But um, I think I feel comfortable eating it knowing that it's got a balance of protein. Um, what is it? And healthy um, sweet. So it's a date bark. So it's got it's made with dates and peanut butter mm -hmm. and some dark chocolate, and then garnished with some pistachios and uh, rose petals. So um, yeah, you, the sweetness that you get is obviously the softness from the dates. There's a little bit of the textural element from the peanut butter, and then the crunch comes from the hardened chocolate on the top. Isn't it crazy how much creamier and more richer peanut butter can make dessert? Yeah, absolutely. And that bit of saltiness, you know, balances out all the sweetness from the date and the chocolate. Um, so yeah, for me, I think, you know, a slice of this on the go, um, you know, keeps energy levels up. Dates are obviously better for you um, in terms of uh, not just uh, energy, but also minerals and things like that. I love how you've turned such a delicious New Year's Eve meal into something that's also so healthy and very Thank waistline you. conscious Thank as well. You. Simi, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much. And uh, not just for the food, but also on educating me on millets and sustainability in general. I love how you're championing such important causes. Thank Keep you. doing everything that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Happy New Year once again. In happy advance. New Year to you too. Thank you for coming. 
All right, guys. So we've come to the end, not just of the episode, but of the season. We are just hours away from the countdown to 2024, and the traffic is looking pretty thick. I better get home in time to my family to celebrate New Year's, much like all of you will be this evening. Thank you so much for joining us from the entire team of Body and Mind. We'd like to wish you health and happiness, and see you next year.